So, <clears throat> what we're doing is we're trying to build a processor. And a processor will require a data path and a control, control unit. The data path is a combination of sequential elements, combinational elements, and uh, combinational elements uh, basically just perform some operation given a fixed set of input, produce an output, does not store anything. Uh, whereas the state elements store information. Okay? And flip flops is one, or registers is one of them, and memory. Okay? Now, in building a data path, we decided that uh, we have a specific processor that we're going to look into, and that processor is the leg V8. Arm. Leg V8 is a subset of ARM. And we're going to implement three classes of instructions arithmetic, memory, uh, memory, uh, memory access for the store and branch target. Right? So essentially, the, uh, that's the task. So, how do we build this data path? Right? To build the data path, we have to do the, this incrementally, piece by piece. So, first we start with the instruction fetch. So, what happens when we perform an instruction fetch? Program counter, instruction memory, and then uh, the add. Uh, you can use a full adder here, or you can actually it's add ALU with the hard coded uh, operation add, add, add four bytes to the program counter. Basically, this is the instruction fetch. So it's the first component. The next one is R format instruction. So in the R format instruction, the idea uh, this in the subset of uh, instruction in leg V8, the R instruction is responsible for uh, performing arithmetic operations, R format instructions. And uh, basically, this, set, this instruction, it needs to register operas. For example, add. I, I, I illustrated last time on the board, uh, if you have the add instruction, okay? uh, the add instruction will uh, Look something like this. Add, uh, add, x1, register x1, register x2, register x2. So x2, uh, x2 and uh, x3 will be added, and then the result will be placed to x1. So to, to be able to perform this operation, you need uh, two registers, right? So in, in the implementation of the R format instruction, you're going to need two components. You have the register file, okay? So we have 32, 32 registers in this example, in this in the leg DA. And then we have that A and U, okay? So you need to read two registers. So R1 and uh, register, uh, read register one, read register two for X2 and X3. And then you also need the uh, ALU for performing operation add, which we'll discuss later. And then the right register, which contains the uh, result. So you have to specify the result. So when you execute, when you, when you implement the R instruction like this, you're going to need at least three registers, OK? So when thinking about the design, OK, I'm going to put in a uh, register file, and these are the inputs to the register file. Uh, these are five bits here because there are 32 possible registers in the leg VA, so it's five bits for the input to be able to select uh, one of the 32. Okay. And you also have the leg uh, register write signal, is a write, uh, write control uh, from the quiz. So in order, this should be set in order to write data to the uh, write register. Right register is the right register. Right? So this is for the R format instruction. For the load and store instruction, the idea here is, okay, you have, of course, uh, you're going to need uh, specific uh, uh, parameters. So for example, uh, discussed last time is, uh, uh, what instruction, what, what were the instructions? LDUR, okay. LDUR and Example of LDUR is X1, uh, X2, and then uh, you have the offset. And then the other one is SPUR. So U is for unscaled. Okay. And the same, uh, the same uh, syntax. So X1, 
x2 of z. Okay. So the reference point here is that you begin with the instruction set architecture. Okay. So this is our given, your task as a computer architect. Okay. I want you to support this operation. What are the functional components that you will need to implement this in the data path? Okay. So for these two instructions, load and store, you need register operands. So as you can see here, there are two register operands, x1 and x2, x1 and x2. Okay. And then you need to calculate the address using a 16-bit offset. Okay. To be able to, uh, this is the 16-bit offset. Okay. We'll discuss the instruction format later. Uh, and you're going to use the ALU for that. Okay. And of course, sabi natin, yung ALU, ginagamit yun. It's, it's the functional unit that is used by the three classes of instructions. Uh, so, uh, yung R instruction, ito ay sa load and store, sa instruction fetch, gumagamit yun ng ALU. So, very reusable component talaga yung ALU. So, you start with the design of the ALU. So, in this example, going back to this, so you need the ALU, but... Uh, you have to sign extend the offset. Sign extension would mean the sign bit is just copied to expand to increase the size of the data. So originally 16 bit siya, gusto, eh, ang input dun sa ALU ay 32 bit, so you have to sign extend that. Okay. So uh, for the load, uh, you need to read the memory and then update the register. Okay. So of course, when you need to access the memory, you need to specify the address. Okay. And for the store, uh, you write register value to memory. So you have to specify uh, saan galing yung, yung data. So you, the data here will be coming from the register. Okay, and then if this uh, control, un, control link or control bit is asserted, so mag-read siya. Ito naman, mag-write siya. So pag naka-on to, naka-off to, okay, ang mangyayari is uh, naka yung data, pasok dito, tapos ilalagay dito sa, mem sa address na naka-specify dito sa memory. Okay? So we said last time that why are there two separate memories for instruction and data? Because we only want to finish all the instruction in one clock cycle. So kung load and store man yan, addition man yan, uh, subtraction man yan, branch man yan, in one clock cycle dapat natapos na yung operation na yun. Hindi mo pwedeng gawin yun pag magka-share yung data memory sa instruction memory. Okay? It's a different design. Okay? Now, for the branch instructions, branch instruction, an example uh, instruction would be C, uh, B, Z, and then you have the register and the offset. So, for this, uh, for this branch instruction, kailangan mo dito mag-compare ng operands. Okay? Kasi gusto mo malaman kung zero yung, ano, yung value ng x1. Okay? So you need some uh, ALU. And basically, you need subtraction. So subtract mo lang. Okay? And it depends on the result of zero. And then you have to calculate the target address. Okay? So you do this by extending the displacement shifting it to two places to the left, some computations to, to jump. Kasi parang this instruction is magbabranch ka dito, pupunta ka dito, pag zero yung register na to. Okay. So you need to do some computation. Paano ka makakapunta dun sa offset na to? Okay. You need to use the program, the value of the program counter. Okay. Okay. So kanina, pagpasok kasi sa branch instruction, na increment na yung ano yung program counter so relative to that ngayon yung pag jump mo so this one is equivalent to jump jump if zero okay? jump jz tapos yung uh, uh, location na dyan, jump niya okay so that's the idea so here will be, uh, this will be the components for the uh, more complicated for the branch instruction so it will need uh, the register file which we can reuse in the ALU. Okay. Uh, it's going also to be so it's going to uh, the instruction uh, will be allocated to the register of password. 
and then you need the sign uh, sign extension. Okay. Uh, 64 from 32, that way 64. Okay. And then dito ay yung pagpasok ng ano, pagpasok po saan siya magdadyan. Kung, uh, so notice na kanina, na-increment na yung PC plus 4, the instruction fetch, di ba? Ito yung minyong papasok dito, okay? And then, i-add yung offset. So yung offset, makukuha mo yun sa instruction, okay? So, makukuha mo yun sa instruction, and then, uh, side extend that, shift left, okay? And then, i-add mo ngayon yan, yun yung magiging bagong value ng program counter. Okay? So, kami ang makikita niyo yung big picture, but for, uh, and then, uh, this one will, ano, uh, will, uh, ito ay magsasabi lang kung pag zero siya, magpuposin ko siya sa jump o hindi. Okay. Kaya, ito yung purpose ng PLA. And the green, the blue part here represents control, uh, control lines, which we will discuss later. Remember, the processor requires a data path and the control unit. Okay? So composing the elements, so pagkasama-samahin mo na yan. So what we did is to individually consider how to design each, ano, each component. Pero hindi naman siya optimized kung ang gagawin natin, uh, hiwa-hiwalay sila. Gagawa ka ng computer, iba-ibang functional unit depende sa instruction na ini-implement mo. So a better design, magiging costly yun. So a better design is would be to integrate now the different elements to be able to support this subset of instruction. Okay? So, nanagas nyo ba yung, ano, yung flow natin? Okay. So, the idea is, uh, first cut the data path, uh, okay? uh, first cut data path, that's an instruction in one clock cycle. I mentioned a while ago. So, uh, kung hindi kayo sa race cycle, sa, ano, sa, sa mat 17, uh, meron tayong ano, di ba, uh, sign, sign graph. Okay. So, analog signal. Usually, analog signal yon Sa 137, i-discuss nyo yung dalawa yan. Uh, this one is a continuous signal. So, this is one cycle. So, basically, 0 to 360 sa, sa, ano, sa trigonometry. Now, sa digital signal kasi, ito continuous to. Sa digital signal, ones and zeros lang. Okay. Okay, you, get, you get the idea. Actually, you can actually approximate this by squ square wave, sine wave. Right? You can approximate this by using a, a called uh, technical Fourier transform to approximate this using uh, analog signal. But we'll dis you'll discuss that in, uh, in 137. Uh, but the point here is, ito, isang cycle yan. Okay? And then, uh, so if we do this, uh, if we allow the, uh, if we design the system, so that all instructions will finish in one clock cycle, okay? So these are the uh, res uh, the the main. Uh, I mentioned this a while ago, okay? Uh, because of that, okay? And pag pinagsama-sama na natin sila, uh, we will be needing uh, some. We will be making decisions. Kung ano yung papapasukin mo sa mga inputs, okay? So. <coughs> And to do that, to be able to determine kung ano yung padadaanin mo na linya, parang traffic enforcer, you're going to insert additional multiplexers for that. Okay? So, so the first part is, okay, minerge natin yung ano. Let's merge the, uh, this is the R instruction, example of our R instruction, load and store instruction, and the branch instruction. So let's integrate the R type instruction and the load store uh, instruction data path. So pag minerge mo yan, ano yung mangyayari? So may mga components na isi-share ka na dyan. So instruction, di ba pag nagaling sa instruction fetch, lalabas sa instruction memory yung instruction. Okay? We'll determine the size later. Okay? And then, itong instruction na to will be connected kasi may mga parameters yan eh. May mga, may mga parameters yan. It's called the instruction word. Okay? Uh, may, mga, may mga fields yan. Kung 32 bits yan, may, mga, may meaning yung bawat field yan. So, nandun yung register, parameters. Okay? So, may input yan dyan, filter. And then, 
kanina meron tayong sign extension. So, syempre, may, off may offset, di ba? We have these offsets. So, these offsets will be sign extended. So, dadaan nyo dito. Mamaya, mamaya na yung mga label na may part na instruction will be on. Yeah. Okay? And then, uh, this one, ito ngayon sinihin ko ngayon yung multiplexer. Okay? Kanina, wala yung multiplexer. Kung, kung magkaniwala yung R type sa kayo yung, ano, yung load and store, wala yung multiplexer. But this time, you need to introduce a multiplexer. Kasi, kung halimbawa, arithmetic lang yung ginagawa ko, ah, yung R instruction lang, diretsyo sa register yan, di ba? Pag tinignan mo doon sa ano, sa sa R, uh, wala ba dito? Wala. Wala. Okay, so, uh, direksyo lang dapat siya kung wala na lang, kung wala ang uh, wala ang load in store. Pero, may load in store ka na kasi ginagamit mo rito sa ALU. So, kailangan magsingit na yun ng multiplexer. Nag-guess to yung idea na yun? Kasi kailangan mong mamili, depende sa instruction, manggagaling ba sa register yung input mo sa ALU o manggagaling doon sa memory na na-sign extent mo. You get the idea? So, uh, where else are you going to put the uh, uh, multiplexer here? Okay. So, you're also going to put uh, a multiplexer here. Okay. Kasi yung result na nano, yung result ng uh, uh, ALU, okay, pwedeng jump instruction yan eh. Okay. So, uh, pwede kang mag-produce ng jump offset. Okay? So, you might need to select kung saan mo ilalagay yan. Okay? From memory to register. So, babalik mo siya dito so, sa register file. You get the idea? So, uh, yan. Uh, and of course, you have the, the usual line. So, you inserted two multiplexers kasi in-integrate mo na yung R type sa kalaw din store. Okay? Wala pa dito yung branch instruction. And if we implement, if we... Uh, <coughs> <coughs> wala pala yung process action ano to uh, uh, para sa load and store lang to now if you include now the full data path this is what it will look like okay that supports all these operations and should accomplish is finish its instruction in one clock cycle okay get the idea so a picture makes a thousand words right so basically, you have the program counter, and ito yung natin na instruction increment PC plus 4. Ito yung, ito uh, <coughs> makukuha mo yung address, kukuha dito yung instruction sa memory, papasok siya dito, okay? And then, uh, dito nagsingit siya ng ano, ng ano, uh, AN, ito yung para sa branch instruction, kanina. Okay? So take note na meron ka rin multiplexer dito. Kasi, ang pwedeng mangyari kung meron kang branch instruction, pwede kang pumunta kung saan nakalagay yung offset doon sa CPC or i-retain mo lang kung halimbawa for D0 yung X1. Mag-proceed ka lang doon sa, ano, sa original ng PC plus 4. You get the idea? Nasundan niyo ba guys? Okay, so, this is the full data map. Okay. And, kulang pa siya. Data path pa lang siya, pero yung control, kung ano yung gagawin niya, this is the next part. Okay? Control unit. Okay? Now, before we can... Uh, <coughs> there are two components when deciding that design. Yung mga green na yan, yung mga blue na yan, that represents the control lines. Okay? So, kailangan ikabit mo yan sa control lines. So, para sinasabi natin dito, okay, Ay, we have this pass, pero kailangan natin uh, maglagay ng mga control lines to be able to choose these operations okay, to, to run, okay, to, to execute for this instruction. So we now need to populate this. Okay? So first, let's start with the dalawa, yung para sa lahat, tapos para sa ALU. Okay? Notice na Dito, this is the ALU. Ito yung ipofocus muna natin before the, before the entire uh, <coughs> uh, control unit para sa lahat. Sa ALU muna tayo. Okay? <coughs> so actually, itong ALU na to was, uh, is described in, append in the appendix of the book. 
Ay, sa dulo. So, I advise that you read the book and uh, review yung Appendix A. Actually, Appendix A. Nandun to. Okay. So, as mentioned, the ALU control, the ALU here, the big ALU, is shared by all the instructions. Okay? Ginagamit siya. R type ng loaded store ng branch. Okay? So, nakalagay dyan, Pag-load in store, ang function niya ay add. Pag-branch, ang function niya ay subtract. Kasi i-subtract niya para malaman mo kung zero. Okay? And then the R type depends on the opcode. Okay? Doon sa appendix ay nakadescribe yan kung paano dinesign to. Okay? So, <clears throat> pwede nung sabihin, so notice na yung design natin ng ALU operation dito ay slash, nakalagay to slash 4, backslash 4. Ibig sabihin yan, 4 bits yan. Okay? So, yun, 4 bits yan, yung line dyan. That's why, here, you have 4 bits. Okay? Now, depending on the value of the ALU control lines, ito yung operations na gagawin niya. Okay? Get the idea? Okay. So, you have end, or add, subtract, pass input, padadaanin mo lang. Okay? And then, uh, not or. Okay? So, yan yung sa ALU. Okay? And how do we, ano, how do we uh, create the uh, line signals para i-determine yung operation na yun? So, parang kung designer ka, parang nagpo-program ka, designing the control actually is parang nagpo-program ka na rin ng machine. Okay? So, ito yung ALU control. Ibig sabihin yan, ito yung magiging input nyo dito. Okay? Paano nyo ngayon palalabasin yan based doon sa instruction word? Okay? Uh, di ba, di ba mayroong instruction word dito? Okay? Paano mo palalawasin yung mga operations na yun para mag-set yung link dito? Okay? So, that's the idea of the uh, next slide. Okay? So, we assume a 2-bit ALU op, op, op code derived from the op code <coughs> and the combination, combinational logic derives the ALU control. So, ano ibig sabihin nito graph na to, ano figure na to? Okay. If the opcode is LDUR or SPUR, yung field na ALU O para yung zero zero. Okay. Yung opcode opcode field opcode is basically yung instruction word. Okay. Walang ba walang meaning yon. And then ang Kaya output mo ay 0010. So parang nagbibuild ka lang ng ano dito ng mapping. Okay? So pag uh, CBZ, CBZ, okay? So you have uh, 01, okay? And then pass input and then ito yung output niya doon sa AL control. And for the R type, okay? Ito yung uh, output niya. Now, yung R type sa ALU op kasi ito uh, Okay, take note na yung R type, okay? Ito yung mga operations na gagawin mo. Okay? So, you have to be able to obtain that from the opcode field. Kaya okay, mas dito yung opcode field, okay? Ito yung bit pattern that represents the opcode field. That's the yung kaya output mo dun sa ALU control. Nasundan nyo ba? So, what at this point, what we're designing is this one. Itong 4 bits na to. Okay? So, we now move on to <coughs> the main control unit. Ito ay para sa ALU control unit na. Para mapalabas mo yung mga bits na yun. Para malaman mo ano yung gagawin ng ALU. Nasundan niyo ba? Kailangan mo ito para malaman mo kung ano yung gagawin ng ALU. Paano man nalaman yun, kailangan mo i-understand yung uh, off-code tapos basically mag-assign ka ng mapping ng ALU. Uh, of 2 bits to represent kung ano yung instruction na ginagamit mo. Okay? And we now move on to the design of the main control unit. Okay? So, ito na yung sinasabi ko yung discussion ng instruction word. Okay? Control signals derived from instruction. Saan manggagaling to? So, how many bits rep, uh, yung instruction word? 32. 0 to 31. Ito yung ibubuga dito. Okay? 
Ang sundan nyo ba? Yan yung ibubuga dito. And that will be interpreted later. Okay? So for the R-type instruction, ito yung kanyang uh, representation. You have the opcode, you have the two operands, register operands, and then you have the destination operand. So going back to this illustration, R-type to, di ba? Okay. So add. Okay. Kung add yan, Ibig sabihin, yung opcode field, ano ba yung op ilang bits ba yung opcode field? 21, 22, ilang bits lahat? 11. Okay, so 11 bits, ibig sabihin, may ibang part na gagamitin for uh, specifying the, uh, mamaya, kung ano yung value. So, limbawa, uh, ito for ALU pa ito, mamaya, mamaya na makikita. Okay, but for now, sa R-type, meron corresponding value yan dyan. And then, halimbawa, yung X2, ito yung nandun sa RM. Uh, RM, nandun yung X3. Tapos sa RD, nandun yung X1. You get the idea? So, yun yung implementation ng instruction word. Now, for the load and store naman, okay? So, these are in decimal, base 10. Okay? So, sa load and store, okay? So, nandito yung address, okay? Which actually the offset. And then you have the base, okay? And then you have the, okay? Kung saan mo ilalagay, kung saan mo i-retrieve. So you have the base address, okay? And then for the conditional, so this is the offset, and then the register to be register to be compared, and then this will be the value of the kung maga fix na to okay? for the for the condition brand instruction fix na na 180 okay? ang value for the load and store load 1986 uh, store 1984 as ito magbabago yan okay? depende dito okay you get the idea so and this will now be the final output So, anong nabago? Yung mga green represents, ah, yung blue represents the control unit. Okay? Whereas, the black one is yung, yung uh, uh, data path. Okay? So, anong nakikita niya dito? Okay? So, program counter, you get the instruction. Okay? And, 0 to 31. Ito yung instruction word. Okay? And, uh, nakalagay na dito kung ano yung mga parameters. Okay? So, read register 1, instruction 5 to 9. So, tingnan nyo ito. So, yung register 1. Offset 5 to 9. Kaya yun tayo nila. So, yun yung purpose doon. And then, yung pangalawang register, dalawa yung query source niya. Saan pwede manggaling yung source ng register 2? Pwede siya manggaling sa 16 to 20. Offset 16 to 20. Okay? Para yan doon sa app instruction. Okay? Ito tayo nyo yan? 16 to 20. And then for the other one, pwede rin siya manggaling sa offset 0 to 4. Saan ba saan yun? Sa? Dito. Okay? So, kaya siningitan mo siya ng multiplexer dito kasi depende sa instruction. And again, saan nakakapit ito? Kung ano pipiliin niya, i-trace mo yan dito, register to location. Depende kung saan mo pupunin. Right? What other components? So, dito sa extension, para sa ALU control, meron pa dito na hindi mo na pinadaan sa extension. Ano itong instruction 21 to 31? Saan nyo kukunin yung 21 to 31? This will be the opcode. Kasi diba, kailangan mo yan sa ALU control. Sa 
AMU control, doon mo malalaman kung unsub siya. So, kukunin mo yung bits na yun, ipapasok mo dito sa AMU control, maglalabas siya kung ano yung gagawin ng operation ng AMU. You get the idea? So, that's essentially how uh, this thing works. And, so, ang nangyayari, halimbawa, uh, this is at memory location, let's say, 0x7c00. Okay. Itong instruction na to. Okay. So, yung program counter mo, i-simulate natin kung paano ito gagana. Okay. So, yung program counter mo, 7c00. Tapos, ang mangyayari is, hahanapin sa memory, ilalagay sa instruction word itong, itong line na to. Add. Okay. Tapos, ang mangyayari, after this, at this point, uh, 7C004 na. Diba? Tama ba? 7C004 na? Kasi na-implement ng program number. And then, ang gagawin is, hihimay-himayin na ngayon yung uh, itong, itong instruction word na to. Okay? Kung add yan, yung opcode dito, yung bits na to, ano kaya yung value niya? Makikita niyo yan dito. Kung add yan, 10000. Okay? Yun yung value na nakalagay dito. Okay? Tapos, yung RM, actually, depende. So, yung RM can be X2 or X3. Okay? So, basta gagawin dyan, idadisect na yung instruction. You get the idea? Idadisect na yung instruction more. Uh, Utay-tayin siya. So, ito muna, actually, actually, ito muna yung magsasabi. Yung control muna. Papasok dito. Tapos, i-determine niya kung ano yung mga i-on niya na lines para mag-perform siya ng operation na yun. Nagod na kailangan. You get the idea? So that's basically the data pass with control. Okay? Now, ito, uh, for, ito yung ano, for everything. Okay? Now, the succeeding slides will show you ano yung mga active na lines for the particular uh, class of instruction. For the art, yung mga gray, Naka-disable yun. Pero yung uh, naka-black, sila yung active for that type of instruction. Right. So, napansin nyo, uh, siyempre, active kung R-type yan, active yung registers, yung mga lines na yan. Of course, the ALU should be active. A, yung control. Yeah. This is for the R-type instruction. For the load instruction naman, okay. so, notice na yan, uh, halos sa gamit, buhay lagi yung ano, yung uh, register file saka yung ALU. Saka of course, the instruction MOE. Okay. So, yan. Nakita mo yun dito. Okay. Sa load. Sa load. And for the branch, okay. Pakita nyo naman ano yung mga active na lang. So, nandito, nandito, sa part ako. Okay. Get idea? So, I think, hindi siya makukuha ka agad, agad. But uh, just by looking at it and trying to observe the behavior okay, uh, of this system, of this, set, of this processor, we'll be able to understand how it actually works. Okay? So actually, ito na yung, ano, ito na yung essence ng ano, kung paano ba, paano ba nag execute na program yung bare hardware. Okay? Get the idea now? Okay. So, what's na yung 1, 3, 2? Okay? Basically for this, but of course the main the main problem with this is, ano siya? Uh, it's a limited uh, limited because one clock cycle lang siya, and of course you have a limited set of instruction. Imagine you yung x86, di ba? x86-64, maraming instruction. Imagine mo yung jump zero, paano yun? Implement yun dito, yung uh, bull bull of it, a uh, bull. Uh, Operation. Alam mo, kasama na yun ang AMU ng SAMC. So, depende sa instruction set, depende sa complexity ng machine. Okay? So, ang, ang medyo uh, available na yun na parang open source na uh, instruction set architecture design ay yung RISC-V. Okay? So, kung halimbawa, uh, trip nyo mag, ano, mag uh, gawa ng kumpanya na mag implement ng RISC-V, okay? Pwede, niyong, pwede kayong gumawa. Okay? Maging hardware manufacturer. 
Okay. So that's the, the idea. And this is how you do it. How you do it. Okay. You start with the instruction set architecture, you break it down, and then you implement the different functional units by combining combinational part components and sequential components. Okay. Now, not included in this uh, uh, is uh, in the previous design is the unconditional branch instruction. So, ito, uh, equivalent dito sa x86 is jump zero. Okay. What if you just want to perform a jump? Okay. Okay. So, ito yung tinatawag na uh, unconditional uh, branch. Gusto mo lang mag-jump dun sa location na yun. Remember na yung address na yun, ha? yung address na yun pertains to the instruction memory. Remember, wala yung instruction memory sa data memory. Kung ano man yung address na nandito, that is in reference to the instruction memory. Okay? So, this will be the the breakdown of the instruction word. Okay? So, 0 to 25, that will be the address, and then this will be hard-coded and fixed at all, number 2. Okay? So, uh, then this is what happens. So, update the program counter with concatenation of the top four bits of the old program counter, the jump address and 00 to forward boundary. Yeah, so yun yung ginagawa ng, ano, ng jump address. So, pag sinama mo yan, okay, so you'll have something, uh, you have a new line here, unconditional branch, which uses an OR gate, okay, and the input from this orbit will be kung naka-on siya, conditional branch, tapos kung ano yung output nito. Like, then you will see it more. And basically, same bit lang. Okay, get the idea now? So, there. Now, paano ini-implement to sa hardware? Truth table lang, basically. So, may truth table ka lang, okay, parang imamapo lang yun dun sa ano, uh, may truth table ka, okay, may mga values na ano, may mga values uh, na 0, 0 to 31, okay, yung big values niya, tapos ilang bits yung output niya, ilang bits yung output control niya dito, ano din lang naman yan, isang other columns din naman yan, Alam niyo yung mga don't cares, don't care sa, sa 130? Okay, so something like that, yung pag-setup nito. So, how's direct mapping na lang yan? Ilatag mo lang yan yung, uh, kasi halimbawa, 0 to 32. Okay? Uh, 0 to 31, 32 bits yan. Ilan yung possible combination ng instruction word niya? Madami, di ba? So, kailangan, uh, ilalagay mo lang dun sa true table niya yung may actual value talaga, may actual meaning. So, yung mga don't care ka na. So yung technique sa water, yun yung ginagamit para gawin doon. And then you have the output signs ito. Ayan. And then, what's in zeros lang naman ito eh. So depending sa value dito, 1 or 0, 1 or 0. Okay? Get the idea? So, okay, so the problem with this design is, uh, we'll finish with this slide. The problem with this design is that one clock cycle. Okay? So halimbawa, uh, so, ibig sabihin kung uh, 3 gigahertz yung ano mo, 3 gigahertz yung uh, CPU frequency, okay? marami ka ng instruction na pwede yung execute Kasi 3 gigahertz eh, cycles per second, di ba? Marami ka ng instructions na may, ma, na may execute, mabilis yung ano mo. So, essentially, ganun yung mangyayari. Now, the problem is uh, this, okay? So, Kinonstrain mo na yung sarili mo dun sa longest, ato, longest delay. Okay. Which is basically, uh, ano yung, ano, ano yung pinaka, pinakamahaba dito na operation? Sabi dito is the load instruction. Bakit? Kasi ginagamit niya lahat ng components. Okay. Diba, dito pinakita natin dito na sa data path, may mga ibang components na hindi ginagamit. Right? Yung mga naka-gray, yun yung mga hindi ginagamit. But for the load instruction, mahaba yung kanyang path. Ginagamit niya yung kanyang data memory. So, by doing that, okay, so this is the critical path sa graphs. Meron tayong critical path. So, 
Yeah, that's basically uh, uh, footage the longest delay, okay? And uh, we can actually improve this via pipelining. Ano yung pipelining sa overview sa 125 kahapon, di ba nag interleave tayo ng CPU sa I.O. Instead na maghintay yung process ng, ano, ng uh, matapos yung I.O., singitan muna agad ng iba pang process. That is basically how we're going to do that in pipelining para ma-improve yung performance na ba. Okay? So, that will be uh, all for today. Uh, do you have questions? If none, uh, of course you have no questions. Okay? Uh, you can attend, uh, we have a series of